Hello, I hope you are having the most lovely day today. I decided to come outside and record this because I've been trying to be outside as much as possible. I noticed that I sleep a lot better when I am outside a lot during the day, and so every opportunity that I get to be outside, I want to be outside. And plus, I just really love our chickens. I didn't know I could love chickens so much, and they are just thoroughly entertaining. When I'm working down in the garden, they're up on the hill, so they'll like look down and watch. Probably because I bring them grubs and stuff, so it's probably not an affection for me as much as they associate me with feeding them. I do have a thrift haul for you today. We went to a thrift shop recently. I am so energized by going thrift shopping because even if I don't find anything, it's really fun for me to look for items and just see how you can bring new life to them. So I always look for things that are functional, beautiful, or nostalgic. I like nostalgic stuff in our household, so things that are meaningful. Those are the things I keep an eye out for. All of today's items fall into the functional and or beautiful category. Before I get into that, I have been meditating on this word. I thought I would share it with you today. For me, I find it really helpful not only just to read the Bible, but also to think about what is applying to my life and find a scripture that I can meditate on from the word throughout my day and hide it in my heart. And so this word, I feel like I go through seasons where this is where I need to meditate on this word. It is from 1 Peter 3, verse 6. And I'm going to go ahead and read verse 5 beforehand because it's one sentence, but my focus is from verse 6. So it says, For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children, if you do good, and do not fear anything that is frightening. That last line, and do not fear anything that is frightening. Sometimes I think, how much of my day is thinking about things or worrying about things that I don't need to be worrying about. So I remember a while ago, I read a book from Corey Ten Boon. It's called Don't Wrestle, Just Nestle. And she just flat out said that worrying is sinful. And worrying is getting yourself worked up about something that you can do nothing about. Whereas concern, if you have concern for something, when there is concern, there is an action. There is something that you can do to relieve the concern. So if you're concerned, you can address that by taking some sort of action that would relieve that concern. But worry is when you're doing something that you can't even do anything about. And I've never forgotten that because I just thought that was so helpful for when I'm dwelling on something to think, is this a concern or a worry? And you can determine that by, is this something that I can take action towards that would relieve it? Or is this something that I am just getting so worked up about and it is out of my hands? There's nothing that I can do but give this burden to the Lord. So that is always very helpful for me. But then also dwelling on this verse of do not fear anything that is frightening. I have another Bible that I love. So it is this New Testament in 26 Translations Bible. And I usually use this as a reference whenever I'm reading the New Testament to look and see what the other translations say. And so the other translations for that last line are, And permit nothing to make you afraid. Yield to no panic. Let nothing terrify you. Let no anxious thoughts disturb you. And then I recently read a quote from Dale Carnegie. And he said, Our fatigue is often caused not by work, but by worry, frustration, and resentment. And I pondered upon that and I thought that is so true. Fatigue is often not caused by working, by doing things. Obviously, I, I think that's the best feeling of the, in the world is a day of hard work and then laying in your bed at night and it's a good tired. It's the feeling of working really hard. That's like a good tired or a good fatigue. But then there is the negative fatigue that it comes by worry, frustration, or resentment. And so, again, that ties right back into scripture of not giving way to fear, not giving way to worry. So that's my little bit of encouragement for you today. Now to the things that I got from the thrift store. You may or may not remember from a recent thrift haul, I got a large one of these boards and it was quite thick. It's like a butcher block and it has the round indentation in it and it actually came with this little guy. But with the curve of that bowl, this did not fit. However, I had another one of these that I have 
been saving to find these type of boards with the indentation in it and that cutter worked perfectly with that board and so when I was at this thrift shop I saw this board and it was three dollars and I thought you know what three dollars I'm gonna try getting it and see if this curve fits this curve and so I got home I cleaned it up that's something I always do whenever I get home is I usually clean up everything outside before bringing it in or if it's clothes items I'll throw it in the washing machine and then hang it out on the line so that the Sun can clean it the Sun is the best disinfectant there is so I'll usually sit things in the Sun to purify and cleanse them after cleaning them myself so all these items I cleaned up yesterday but I was so excited because I got this little guy out and it fits perfect on the curve and I don't even think this has ever been used before usually cutting boards if they've been used there's markings and lines in it and this doesn't have any of those markings or lines and then also it can be used on this side and it also doesn't have any markings on this side at all it just looks like it's never been used before which is really cool so now that it's all cleaned up I'm going to try cutting herbs with it today and see how well this cuts herbs because that is why I got these because I just think they look like the cutest little way of chopping up herbs. I got these two ceramic dishes. They are made in Taiwan. I have several of this style glaze and I think they're so pretty. They match the style of again all my other stuff that I have but I don't have any bowls like this. I broke one of our soup bowls in the fall and Scott and I had a matching set and so I haven't been using that as much because I only have one of them. And so when I saw this, they were $2 each and I thought this is perfect. This will be our new soup bowls. Also, I think this would look really pretty on a wood cutting board with salsa or dip in it with chips around it or a vegetable tray. I got six of these mason jars. They were 50 cents each and that is cheaper than if I were to go and buy a box of new ones. The new boxes of this size usually ranges from 12 to 14 dollars for a set of 12 and these were 50 cents each so I got those some of them do have a little bit of a sticker label on them but whenever that is the case I just use lemon essential oil to get it off and the sticky stuff always comes off of glass really well with lemon essential oil and so I got six of these for 50 cents the next item I got I almost didn't get because it was ten dollars and I thought this is kind of pricey but then with this thrift shop doing the little punch card. I had a five dollar off coupon. I figured it was actually a pretty good deal for these. So it is these icing piping tips and there are so many. So there's large ones and then there's small ones. There is maybe two or three duplicates of the small ones. I was so excited about this because I only have two different icing tips and I have told you before one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube is the Tastemaster baking show and it's based in South Africa. So recently one of the ladies she did these realistic looking flowers on cupcakes using different icing tips and when I was watching I thought that is such a cool skill to learn how to do. So when I saw these I was like you know what this is fun I'm gonna go ahead and get them and maybe I can start practicing. And then what I have all of these little tips in is this little basket. So this basket was 75 cents. I couldn't believe it because there were two others like it and they were in worse condition to me and those were three or four dollars whereas this one was 75 cents and I just loved how it looks like a little skillet. I plan on using this in our garden to collect herbs. I just thought it is the cutest little basket for 75 cents. And then the next basket I got was this little guy. This was 50 cents and again I just thought it was so cute. I actually used to have a basket like this and I accidentally left it out in the rain one day and it got ruined. What is the matter? My goodness. And then the last basket is this one. This is the one that I recently saw at a different thrift shop for $14. So when I saw this one, it was $4, which is usually a little bit more than I would pay for a basket. But I thought I love this and I was tempted to get it at the other one because I just thought it was so cool and unique. I like the open weave at the bottom and I thought this would be also really cool for collecting herbs. And then the last thing that I got was this uh, wall copper candle holder. I thought it was so pretty. It was $3 and I just loved it. I have tons of these wax candles. So I haven't figured out where I'm going to hang this in the house. I just thought it was so cute. And I love copper and brass and it goes well with the other stuff that I have in our house. Some of you have asked me 
how I dehydrate my herbs or dry them. And I think this just depends on where you live. So where we used to live, I would just cut my herbs, tie strings around them, and then I had a folding clothes rack thing, the wooden ones, and I would put that up in my house and then tie all of my herbs to that. And then within two weeks to a month, it would totally dry out and then I would store it in mason jars. And in that house, we had a really dark hallway, so it was a perfect place to be able to dry out our herbs and I never had an issue with them molding or anything, but here it can get pretty humid. So I have concerns with doing that in our house. So instead, my parents got me a nice dehydrator for Christmas. I used to have, well I still have it, but one of those round ones and I just didn't feel like it functioned very well, whereas my new one works really good. So that's what I'm using now to dehydrate all of my herbs. I just turn it on the lowest temperature setting. That way it preserves as much of the nutrients as possible. If you do it on a super high heat, you could be basically damaging the nutrients out of your herbs when you go to use them. That being said, I think sometimes we get so focused on preserving things from the garden that you forget to use them while they're fresh in season. And herbs are really at their highest value when they are fresh. So as great as it is to preserve them for when winter comes, you can still make teas and salves and tinctures. I also try to be really diligent with using them while they're fresh. So making lots of tea with the fresh herbs. I try to every day make some form of a sun tea and sometimes I try to get creative with it and it ends up not tasting that great. And other times I just stick with what I know tastes good. Today I did a combination of dried herbs and fresh herbs from the garden. So things that I don't have fresh are nettle, oat straw, and alfalfa leaves. So I put those dried in my filtered water and then I went out to the garden and picked some lemon balm. Our lemon balm is going crazy. So I'm trying to cut that back because I have some flowers that are growing around it and I don't want them to suffocate. And then we also have lots of red raspberry leaves. So I pinched a few of those off with the red raspberry leaves. You have to be a little bit careful because there are thorns around them. And then I also just try to wad up the leaves in my hand just to, again, release some of those nutrients. So when you're putting it in the water, they've already been kind of roughed up. And then I just put the lid on tightly and then I turn it upside down and then I let it infuse in the sun all day. And then that's usually how I drink my water is through tea because then I'm not only staying hydrated but I'm getting lots of minerals and nutrients out of what I'm drinking as well. So I love this time of the year because I love making the sun tea and I love using fresh herbs that I have to make it. Speaking of, I'm going to go down to the garden, pick some things, and then I'm going to try using this cutter and we will see how good it is. I have not sharpened this blade, I just cleaned it really well and we'll see how sharp it is but I'm excited to see if it works. We are going with mint. So that's what I'm gonna put in my water. Moment of truth. That does a really good job. Look at that. I am very impressed by this. Oh, don't hit my ring. Do you want more? Oh my, you guys just bumped into each other. Here. Did you just drop it? Yes, I do always look up to see if chickens can have something before I feed it to them. Here, big girl. Okay, you're not a fan. <laughs> 